Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I pray that you're all doing well. I have another prophetic word to share with you all. But before I dive into that word, I just want to say that we serve such an awesome God. And he has opened up new opportunities for me here on YouTube that I will be sharing with you all at a later date. It is, you know, some awesome opportunities, as I said, and the only way that you're going to hear about the details is if you've already subscribed to my channel. So if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And for those of you that are new to my channel, I say welcome. And for those of you that have been with me for, you know, the duration, I want to say bless you. And I love you all. And I'm going to just dive into this word. All right. And so this word is a word that the Lord deposited to my spirit after a situation that I encountered in my personal life. And so I'm going to tell you that situation and then get into the word. And so last month, being the month of March, I was running some errands with my daughter. And as I was sitting in my car, I noticed that there was this water line, which what I thought was a lot water line coming from my um, windshield, the top of my windshield. And I didn't pay much attention to it because I thought it was a water line, like I said. Then as I drove my daughter to her next stop, I saw that the line got longer. But again, I thought it was water, right? Just running down. And so my daughter went inside a, um, a takeout restaurant to pick up her order and I noticed that the line seemed to have gotten longer again and then there was this sudden wind and you know the car shook and I saw that the line spread but then I noticed that it wasn't water that there was an actual crack in my windshield and so I called my insurance company immediately and that company contacted um, the insurance company contacted a windshield mechanic and um, then that company contacted me and we made arrangements to have my windshield replaced the next day. So then the next day came and my daughter came with me again to the appointment and we waited in the um, mechanic shop while they did the, the work. And afterwards, you know, um, when the owner came to me and said that it was time to pay the deductible, I discerned a not so forthright look on the mechanic's face who came up and sat up front as the owner tallied my cost for the deductible. But I didn't pay it much attention so or much attention to that gut feeling and, um, you know, but I knew that something wasn't on the up and up, but anyways, so then the owner said to me that when um, the mechanic took my car out, he noticed that there was a shaking at the front of my vehicle. And if I ever needed mechanical work done, that they did more than just windshields. I explained to him that I hadn't noticed any shaking, but that I had friends and family members that were mechanics, but that they didn't do windshields. And so that's why I was there. And so I thanked him for everything and, and I laughed. So I've got to tell you about the week prior. So the week prior, so this happened with the windshield about on a Tuesday, but the Friday before that, I had just had my oil changed at my regular oil change spot, which is one of those that you drive into. And, you know, normally I would get out of my car and I'd go sit in the waiting area. But because of the COVID pandemic, we have to remain in the car. And so as they checked my oil, they would, you know, they showed me the dipstick prior and then they showed me the dipstick after. And then they checked all my levels and I could watch as all this was occurring, right? And so my next oil change is still not due for another 3,000 kilometers. And for those of you that live in the States, you know, my friends and family that live in the USA, that's about 1,800 um, miles. And so um, I laughed, I, you know, I, um, I laughed, but I couldn't get over that, that strange, you know, feeling that, that was in my gut, that gut feeling, but I chose to ignore it, you know, um, 
So at any rate, after I left the um, windshield mechanic, I noticed that um, my service light came on, service engine light came on. And I thought that, you know, it was probably like just not reset properly when I got my oil change. And so I chose to ignore it. Then every time I was in my car, I kept getting a stirring in my spirit that something wasn't right. And I even reflected on the looks and that gut feeling I picked up on at the windshield place. But again, I chose to ignore it. Then this last Sunday, I jumped out of my sleep as I had this extremely huge and loud neon sign flash before me saying, check engine now. I jumped out of bed and immediately said, what is that, Lord? Abba, is that you? What are you saying? Then I got still before the Lord and I heard clearly, check your engine. So I called an acquaintance and asked him to pick up some motor oil and some transmission fluid for me. Then when they he arrived, he opened the hood of the car and began checking the levels. The oil level was very low. I don't drive very much. And like I said, I just recently had my oil done and there's no leaks. But at any rate, then we allowed the car to run for a while and then we checked the transmission fluid. We checked and checked. It was completely empty. Not one bit of liquid or fluid was on that stick. So we ran it for a bit longer and guys, there was nothing. It was completely dry. It was tampered with. I had just had all my levels checked the week prior to the windshield incident. So I say all of that to say this, what has the Holy Spirit been speaking to your spirit about that you have been ignoring? We are spirit beings in a physical body. And when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit of Almighty God comes to reside in you. John 10, 27 states, my sheep hear my voice. Listen, friends, do not ignore the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Some refer to this as a gut feeling. You are a child of the Most High God. You are the temple of the living God. His Spirit will lead you into all truth. Had the Holy Spirit not given me such a dramatic alarm, I would have missed the window of opportunity to do something about my car before unfavorable damages was done. The enemy is roaring around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So I forgave and I pray for those that the enemy uses to try to cause harm to me or difficulties to me and I move on. And I know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But my point here, though, is this. Do not miss your season of opportunity or your window of opportunity to do what you discern that you ought to be doing. You may never get that opportunity again. That season or window of opportunity is now to act on what you know you should do and must do for the kingdom of God. You do not need all the answers to act. Take a step or a leap of faith. What is your gut telling you right now? What have you been putting on the back burner? Act on that very thing before it's too late. Amen. God is for you. He is with you. It may not seem like it's the right timing because all of all what's going on around us, but you don't have and, and you don't need to have everything in place or have all the facts or all the blueprints. 
But how God works most of the time is that, you know, he wants us to take that first step in faith. And I'm reminded of the four men with leprosy in the scriptures. They knew that if they stayed where they were, that they would die from the famine. And they thought that if they left where they were, they might die also. But as they took a step in faith and left out from where they were, God caused their footsteps to sound like a mighty army of horses and chariots. This causing the enemy to flee for their lives, leaving their camp, food, and all their treasures behind. You see, we must step out in faith and God with God. And, you know, God will meet you in the stepping out. We are in a season of divine favor and acceleration. But we, but as we learned last week, in Corinthians, we are co-laborers with God. God could have given me, you know, all the warnings in the world, right? But if I didn't act upon them, I would have missed an opportunity to fix the situation. Many of you are ha or have been waiting on God to show you a neon sign. And listen, I'm guilty of that myself. But we have to move in faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. It may seem or feel uncomfortable, guys. And any time that we start something new, we, you know, we have to make changes. And it can be scary at times, right? But change is a part of growth growth and nothing will change until you do. Albert Einstein is credited as saying that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. We can't blame God for not for our inactivity. God won't do what we can do. You've got to do your part. Many of us say that we are waiting on God, but is it possible that God is waiting on you? In your gut right now, you know that this word is for you. And the Holy Spirit is saying, do it. What do you know? What do you know that you've been putting off? Well, no more. This is your wake up call, your neon sign check engine now if you do what god is asking you in this season i promise you you are going to experience the fullness of god you know your life is about to change for the better and god is about to take you places that you never dreamed possible don't let fear steal your promises it is a tactic of the enemy to keep you stagnant. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path. God has gone before you. God is working it all out for your good behind the scenes. He already has the blueprint for your success. Remember, when you don't see a way, he has the way. And he is just waiting on you. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 states, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Amen. So ignore the distractions around you. Be still before the Lord. And after you get your instructions, it's time to move into action. It all starts with acting upon what you have been discerning in your spirit and that God is calling you to action. Now is the season. Just do it. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't let it slip away. Remember, 
Philippians 4.13, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are at the right place at the right time. All right, and this is the right season. I pray that this word has been an encouragement to you all. You know, I love you all so very much, and God loves you even more. And remember, as always, to keep your sights on the things that are eternal, for it's in the eternal things that we can move beyond the walls.